Welcome to If the Walls Could Talk in Buffalo. Don, how you doing? Here we go. Here we go. Doing part good. three. Yep. Good, uh, good, part two. Part two was a little more in depth than we expected, so we wanted to kind of, you know, cut it at a reasonable time. So here we are with the the finale of our uh, Poli and Tabin series uh, about the rise and fall of all the GMs. We're about halfway through the drought. Uh, we are <laughs> slogging our way through the uh, Russ Brandon into uh, Buddy Nick uh, Buddy Nick's era uh, of uh, Bills football. So we're in the 2010s. Uh, we talked about the end of Russ being the GM and being bumped up to president, but you also said that the delineation of duties finally became a little clearer where Watch. the football guys were in charge of football. Right. And as Marv, you said, shared in the last episode, the parking lot guys went back to being in charge of the parking <laughs> lot. <laughs> Woo! So. Yeah. Well, yeah, the way Marv framed it, uh, where, that's, where, what, that's how he saw let's it. Let's start right? here. Where were you? Where was your level of job security when you found out that Buddy Nix was going to be the GM? Uh, it was higher than when, um, Marv was let go and I didn't know who was going to be the, the GM. I, I knew Buddy when he was a scout, uh, back in the nineties on the Super Bowl teams. I hadn't seen him in forever. I, 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 you know, I didn't realize he was still in the game at all and, uh, came to my office and, and, uh, you know, he, he, it was weird and he's, I just saw it, like I said, a different side of him where he was ready, he was ready to, like, he'd been wanting to be a GM his whole life, which I didn't know. I guess okay. I, sh anyone would want to sure. be if you were a scout, I guess, but. W was there any eye rolling? This is the third in-house, not, not that he was in-house at the time, right. but this is the third familiar face. Well, it, it was not really because he had gone to, uh, he was working with the Chargers with John Butler, got, I want to say he, was AJ Smith was there, but but he got some elevated position, so it made sense. We we wanted a football guy. Right? Oh, sure, of you course. I mean, and and there was there was no debating his credentials. But it was there was a manager. We right. didn't know. How but it was, it was still be. a familiar face. It wasn't. A, it wasn't when we went from John Butler uh -huh. to Tom Donahoe. Clear it right. out. You know, some new guy. It's still somebody who 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 Mr. Wilson knew, yeah. trusted. Super Bowl era, like I'm not saying that he wasn't qualified for the job, right? But it's still that same pattern of security blanket, my guy, Super Bowl guy, blah 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 blah. It, Mr. Wilson made it in port, made a point often about how he needed to trust the person. He right. felt like he might have gotten burned in the past. Do you feel like some of that was a was a was a product of him being ninety years old as well? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, I, I would I would think that he. Um, yeah, he just wanted someone that was going to level with him, and it was kind of a known commodity. Even though Buddy had been, I think he probably was a little hurt by Buddy and AJ going with John Butler years back with San Diego. Yeah, you know, but but he, I don't think I think he knew that he was at least he he was a football guy enough for sure that it made sense. It, Buddy made it clear right away that that. It was going to be his show. Okay. Did he did he have little tolerance for like marketing guys? He uh, he didn't care about anything other than football. We're back to that now. It's amazing how the pendulum. <laughs> so and, yeah. and, and I and I, I was waiting for you to kind of have that light bulb moment where through the last thirty years of Bill's history, the pendulum kept swinging from football guy yeah. to more overseer of the entire organization guy administrative over like yeah. it went back and forth every single time yeah so now we're back to you know the football only guy i don't care about the parking lots i don't care about yeah. concessions i don't want to play in toronto i want home games i'm 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 here i'm here to win games not sell tickets exactly and, and with that came you know new coaches as well so it, it was clear early on that chan and, and buddy were going to be uh very compatible. Paul <laughs> Paul Lancaster was the director of player engagement, and uh, they both had <laughs> they both had a real southern draw. Yeah. Chan and Buddy, as you know, yeah. and they they wanted they trusted Paul a lot in terms of you know help us know these guys what their needs are if there's something we should know let us know open door. But <laughs> Paul would come out and say the 
the conversation was very intelligent, but it was the draw. It just kind of made me laugh sometimes. Where like, I just expected to turn all of a sudden one guy would have a banjo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Buddy Nix is like straight out of central casting. Oh, of, yeah. Of, of a guy from yeah. the South. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and Chan just from, I, I never met him, but right. just press conferences, et cetera. Like the two of them together are very Southern. The, the big time. But, you know, again, Mr. Wilson, well, hey, we, we, we need that, you know, from the SEC and <laughs> right. uh, whatever. And uh, so Buddy made it clear right away to um, – one day, I think I've shared this on the program before, but it was a long time ago, maybe before we were on cover one. But um, briefly, I, I got it was during training camp and uh, the video head of the video department, uh, Greg Estes, uh, who was the assistant yep. when you were there, right, came to me and said, hey, um, buddy is looking at the traveling party and uh, we need to have these pictures taken of every play. We have a new system yep. that the league gave us. The person would be up with the coaches in the coaches' booth, taking the four pictures of every play, uh, offense, defense, special teams at a certain point, and then um, it, it, it gets distributed to the coaches, and you just keep. You're going. the guy. They well, they asked. They needed someone who travel had responsibilities on the road, uh, but didn't have responsibilities during the game, during the game. Yep. and paul lancaster and i were two that i were identified now but paul it's tricky because if a player gets injured where it appears to be serious enough sure he'll have to go to the locker room and be that person that the families would call yep, yep. and let them know sure he's okay that and, happened in the demar hamlin situation uh this yeah past the most extreme case sure. obviously we've ever known but they, even if a guy you know it was, it was a head injury or something or looked really bad he would be that person to tell the family you were the one guy who had nothing to do not not until the game was over right right when the game was over i had to go down and position myself to get everybody on the buses and on the plane. And yep. my, my responsibility was leading up to that. But during the game, I would just sat and watched the press box. So I was like the perfect candidate for it. But, and you weren't really asked, right? Was uh, this an ask? <laughs> no. When it comes from the GM, it's more than – Any extra money? Uh, nope. <laughs> okay. So so you, you got the ultimate uh, thing in the NFL, like we've talked about many times, where all you can do is mess it up. And boy, did I ever. Yeah. Um, right. It's a tough job. It was hard. And uh, I wasn't at training camp. My job was back at One Bill's Drive. I would go there a day here, a day there, but um, I had a lot of work to do. Uh, and it was kind of nice with everybody away. So, but everyone else is at training camp. And so they said, you're going to do it the first preseason game. I think it was home game against the Redskins and week one of the, the regular or preseason, thankfully. And uh, they said, it's really not, we'll, we'll send you a video. So they sent me a video of some guy doing it. <laughs> that's, and that's, I, that's awful. I watched it and I'm like, yeah, I, okay. If they think I can do it, all right, that sure. button, this button. But there's just a learning curve, just like anything else. Well, and this is the NFL. We, yeah. And you know what? Like, this is another. So, okay. Humor me for a minute. This is the same theme that's been run, same thread that's been running through this entire series. Yeah. You, 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 you're eminently qualified human being. You're a smart man. You, your first time ever doing this should not be the first preseason game right. in the NFL. Like, you should have been doing it at camp. They should have had an intern, hired somebody for 40 grand a year. How I was available back then. <laughs> I wasn't doing too much. Yeah. This Somebody should have been doing this every day at practice. Like, just the idea that it, this, it was haphazard. Hey, you know, he's on the party. He's not doing anything. Let's have him do this. Well, it stemmed from – they wanted – it had been done by a, a video guy before. Sure. And they wanted an extra camera angle. They wanted the team to have – so the video guy, it was Casey Weidel, uh, they they wanted from the end zone and there was a lower level. There was, as you know, yep. they wanted to add a, uh, a camera angle. So that took that person that would have been doing yep. it. Yep, And they thought the training would be fine. Greg really went and told them. They can do it. They can do it. They're smart guys. And thank sure, you, Greg. It, it, but, um, but you weren't you weren't trained for this. No, you had and just the idea that you'd be thrown in in the first preseason game yeah. to do a job that that in indirectly but somewhat directly affects. Can you imagine Nick Saban doing that? I don't know. I mean, no, no, I don't. I Bill mean, Belichick. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, like, well, like you better Mike learn Tomlin. It, better learn it quick. I don't think you'd. I don't think you would have been asked to learn it in the first preseason game. I think you would have been at camp every single day. Like, like, how 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 far before the first preseason game did you learn you were doing this? Uh, a couple of weeks. <laughs> I just, I'm yeah. sorry. Like, I just, <laughs> yeah. I just can't imagine a Nick Saban run organization. 
and, and again, and nothing against you, right? right. Like, oh, no. I, I feel like you were put in an impossible position where you're trying to do something. Well, with... it was Paul and me, and, and they sent the video, and I'm like, I, I think I got it. And then the first preseason game, I guess it went horrible. It's game it speed. Went, it you're went doing so it... bad. Oh, my God. It, so this we bugs were, me. Yeah, we, we were turning in. Um, <laughs> we were turning in. It had, you had to do the down and distance. And if there was a penalty, what the result of the penalty was, five yards back, where the ball was going to be, in addition to taking the pictures. It's, and it looked like the cockpit of a, yeah, jet, of it's a just, jet. It's just so haphazard. Yeah. And we th they got fights. Dave Wanstead was furious. And the um, the uh, linebackers coach almost got into a fist fight with Paul. And they're like, what are we going to do? So week two... <laughs> Week two, there. So, Buddy brought me in the office, and he's like, "The next day, I said, Buddy, I can't even pretend that it went well." He goes, "Well, they tell me, you, you know, you're going to be able to do it." And like, how did the training go? And I said, "Well, I didn't, I didn't have the training. I never, I've never sat in that seat before." Right. Just what it goes. Oh, well. He goes, "I'm going to talk to those guys." So on the Wednesday of that week, they brought a guy from camp to sit with Paul and I for like three hours doing it what like you mean from camp from training camp he did it at a camp no they, this they person they brought the him they sent casey weidel back to one bill's drive oh i see so we Got spent it. a whole afternoon why didn't you just go oh, never mind all right you know i i get it i just can't believe that we they did, put you in this position we did a simulated game it was a playoff game the houston texans and the cincinnati Bengals, and we did the whole thing and he was like yeah that's oh my gosh had, had we learned that the week before, sure, it would have gone so much better. We sure. were like, "Oh my gosh!" Like it's right. so fundamental. Of course, you hit that button. But no, it, it, but it you advanced. weren't. But you weren't told this. You weren't. You weren't coached up on this. As the old, we were. Old we were supposed to have gotten all that from the video. Oh, of course. <laughs> that 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 we it was a training video, but well, it was nothing like sitting in the hot seat and doing it. Like and then so we we get uh, to I think it's either Chicago or Minnesota for week two. Someone can look it up. They all seem the same to me. But we're, uh, Dave Wanstead was like, hey, I want to meet with you and Paul to talk about when to take yeah. the picture. It was, you know, before the snap, pre-snap, and, you know, at, at the handoff, and then after a handoff, and then boom, repeat. Okay, that wasn't really the problem. The problem was way more fundamental than that. Sure. Uh, but it was helpful, and so... We get up to the press box, and uh, the first series happens, and Buddy Nix is standing right behind me. I could feel his yeah, breath on awful, the back of my neck. Awful situation. Oh, and I was nervous. My heart was beating. Even though I, I knew so much more than I did the first preseason game, it was still like, this has to, this can't just go a little better. Yeah. This has to go way, way, way better. And first series, boom. I'm like, oh, yeah. Was, I think, fortunately, it might have been a three and out. I was waiting for that first penalty. And Paul, he did a quarter, I did a quarter, and we both, we, we got it enough, like, okay. And at, at halftime, Dave Wanstead hit us in the back. Good job, guys. Okay. And we knew we could do it. We still wanted to sharpen it up, but we had two more preseason games. And by the time, like, if we were 30% accurate the week one, we were probably 80, 85% accurate the second game. By, we were close to 100% by the last preseason game, and then we were in New York at the Jets to play. My nerves all came back. Sure, it's regular season game. All, my, yeah, I could yeah, feel yeah. my heartbeat, but here we go. And it it was – we got to the point, you know, where we could – we would take – you could refresh a picture, like if you wanted to, like, wait a minute, uh oh, I see a guy creeping up here. Here comes a line. Here sure. comes a safety. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that picture. I'm going to take a new picture now. And then they were saying, wait a little. And we, we got it. It was just such a rocky start unnecessarily. <laughs> and, and, again, and again, you don't always, I always don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill, but it just, it, the, the thinking and the, in the, in the process yeah. and the attention to detail and, Hey, this guy's traveling with us. Let's just have him do it. Like, well, I, and it was, that was, that was Greg Estes who convinced yeah, right. Buddy that we were the guys, which we were flattered that he was right. saying, no. but after such a disastrous rollout, right. it was like, ah, okay, what do we do now? And then it, it worked fine. We were, we really, we got, we actually kind of had fun with it. Sure. Oh, I can um, totally see how it would be. I just, yeah. I'm just amazed. It just, it's been a running theme. So yeah. Buddy, so Buddy is the GM for what, three seasons, 10, 11, 12. And uh, yeah, right. so when did it become apparent that it wasn't working? Um, the 11th season, 
was the one that got away from us. That that was the one that felt like a real missed opportunity. You know, the, the three, comeback. three and no start, the four and one, and then you know, Fred goes down and Eric Wood. We lose all these players. We just couldn't finish the job. Couldn't get in the playoffs. And then twelve was a regression from there. Um, I I don't. I thought Buddy ran a, a a good tight ship. I don't. I didn't see that being the problem. I mean, he went after. Hey, we got to get better. We went after Mario Williams, right? Like, and you got him. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't afraid to make big bold moves. Um, and uh, you know, Mario Williams played much better after Buddy was gone. And I think we've had this conversation on the show about coaches and uh, Chan. We thought should have gotten a longer opportunity. But I don't know how really the uh, it all went down. Doug Whaley was being groomed. He okay. was he was was he the GM in waiting? Yeah. Did you kind of did everybody know that? At, yeah. He yeah. Buddy even said, you "Okay, know, I, I'm I'm not here because for... Buddy was how old at this point? Yeah, he he was seventies. Well, was in the seventies. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And he said, "Doug's my guy," and he essentially said, "You know, Doug Whaley will likely be the GM of this team at some point when I when I step away." And uh, but then he was same same pattern. Like yeah. familiar face, no new, no new eyes, no new blood. What's going on, like in the rest of the organization? When Buddy Nix is the GM, is is how are the parking lots? How's the <laughs> how are the like like is everything else running smoothly? Did you feel like it was a little bit more structured than the yeah. four years of? I didn't. Um, I yeah. I think you know Russ got put back on on to oversee all of that. I know he missed the football. He told. He told people that he he missed being part of of football, but he was still president. But you know, we had you saw like Andy Major, uh, yeah, like how capable he was when he was on our program. Sure, like he was overseeing more of that. Dave Wheat was outstanding at what he did. Um, the the business side was in was in really good hands and run very well. And we thought, you know, without the football side needing to do those things. You know, it, it, we stood a better chance of being successful, and so you felt like the, the ship was being righted, like it, it was, was more of a professional. It was being operation. run the right way, it was being run like a regular NFL team. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. the credibility was back, and Buddy Buddy Nix had a lot of credibility around the league. Yeah, he did more, more traditional roles, and you know, Doug was kind of this star scout, um, and yeah, it, came it, from it, Pittsburgh. Had yeah, like the that, Steelers had like the, the Steeler dust on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. He had seen, you know, been part of the Steelers organization to see how they run, and somehow every year they lose these free agents, and they still stay yeah. competitive. And we thought, you know, yeah, that would bode well for us. Is it weird having a guy be like a GM and waiting? Um, yeah, yeah, kind of. Why? Just because. Like like when is this is, when is this going to happen and why is it going to happen? Is he treated like how's he treated around the building? Is he like the crown prince? Kind of, you know, yeah. <laughs> right? Like like yeah. this guy can't do it. Like you don't want to you don't want to cross him. You don't because you don't, two because years from now the bill could come due. You knew he was exactly. You know, you know, he's buddy went on record in the building and outside of the building about it was clear. He I don't think he ever used the words. Doug Whaley will be the new GM, but we we can see it. Sure. Did and, you like Doug Whaley? Yeah, I liked him. I liked him a lot. I uh, was kind of excited about the prospect of him being GM whenever it happened. Again, like you mentioned, coming from the Steelers and young, um, fine, like, yeah. like young, like qualified, yeah, professional, you know. So and, and, and taught well by people that you know you always hear you. Did him. he? Do you ever know like when he came here? Did he have an opinion on maybe how dysfunctional it had been here, like coming from the Steelers? Do you know? I knew we hated the Toronto series. <laughs> okay, like, yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> like I told you, yeah, last like every, like everyone else, yeah, yeah, with sure. Him and uh, Doug and Jim Monas being in the room, I I knew, yeah, that that he didn't to whatever extent he had. But that's kind of a culture shock coming from the Steelers to the Bills in the early 2010s. Like that's a very different, you know, feel and organization and and. You know, both family run, both older owners, yeah, but but right. man, little little different success and 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 expectations yeah. and all the rest. So so uh, Buddy stepped down after famously trading up and for EJ Manuel. Yep. Uh, did he trade up? I, uh, I think he did. Yeah. Okay. So, yep. So EJ Manuel is your new guy. He feels like he's kind of stepping away, leaving the franchise in good hands. You know, young superstar GM. 
franchise quarterback possibility. The only, you know, quarterback picked in the first round that right. year, Florida right. State, good pedigree. You know, there were questions, obviously, about E.J. Manuel, but it's like, okay, I've done my job. I, it feels like Buddy Nix left the organization in a much better place than he than, than he found it. Uh, agreed. That was a sentiment around the building, too. So he steps away. Doug Whaley becomes the GM. Does anything change for you? No, I felt good about things. Uh, I had a good relationship with Doug, and uh, you know, I, I stressed to him that whatever your scouts need, you know, you let me know. And uh, he just said, "Keep doing what you're doing." And um, you know, I and then and then with Doug, I think I've mentioned this on the program before that uh, we might have been a little bit surprised at um, he he wasn't in the office as much as we thought he would be. I think he thought the reason he was being successful was because he was finding these players and scouting them and getting to know them. And he still wanted to do that. Um, and he, he did it a lot with, with Jim Monas. Okay. So we're in, um, we're in May of 2013 here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is the last, the last GM before the current GM. And you, know, you are in a position where you feel like you've dodged another bullet. You are, yeah. you are at, probably the peak of where your responsibilities are, mm -hmm. your duties are, you're comfortable in your role. Um, there's not, there's not, there's no real upside, but there's also no downside for you. You've been doing this for a while and it's, yeah. everything's running smoothly. Well, uh, 2014 happens and Mr. Wilson passes away. Yeah. So obviously things are going to change. Uh, <clears throat> what was your reaction? Like, was he sick for a long time? Was it kind of known that it was the end? About, uh, we'd heard rumors that, yeah, things were going downhill uh, pretty quickly. And as a name you mentioned before, our uh, controller in Detroit, again, I talk to the people in Detroit almost every day, uh, Frank w Winicki was retiring. So they wanted the people, he, he chose people at One Bills Drive in Buffalo that he would want to have at his uh, um, retirement party in, okay. in Detroit. So... I was fortunate to be one of those people and uh, Bill Munson, there was, there was a handful of them, Dave Wheat and some others. And uh, Bill Munson said, you know, the longest tenured employee in the NFL. Yes. And uh, well, when you think about everybody every single day, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there course. you go. <laughs> yeah. um, that's how you stay. That's right. Yeah. 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 But he's like, Hey, Don, I, yeah, I heard Frank wants you there. Um, let's let's drive we had some company vehicles it was yukon he's like you drive because I, I think i might i want to stay in correspondence by phone so like, that's fine yeah i'll pick you up sounds good he, he didn't want to fly he just thought that was a bad sure. look he just thought let's let's drive to detroit we'll go over to canada and uh so we uh we're on the way and he gets a call from mr wilson's uh personal assistant jane wright and hey bill uh, Mr. Wilson is hoping to be at Frank's party. Um, it's a little tenuous right now. He's at home. He's not sure if he's going to be able to make it. But even if he doesn't, would you, he wants to see you. Would okay. you be able to stop by his home? Sure. So, and, uh, so you kind of had to know that things were not good? Yeah. Okay. And then um, it, wasn't, it wasn't on speakerphone. But then a call happened a couple hours later. And it was Jane Wright who'd gone to Mr. Wilson's home. And then she called, uh, Bill was all excited. Ah, the chief wants to see me. Sure. The chief wants to see me. Um, and she called him again and said, Bill, he's not going to be able to make that party. And I, it wasn't on speakerphone, but I could tell from his reaction that it was a somber call. Mm. Like she said, I just saw him and there's no way he should even try to go to okay. the party. And, uh, but she said at this point still plan to go to his house okay so <laughs> i'm sorry to laugh it was like, but we get bill goes to me he goes uh hey uh when we get to his house um is it okay just i'm gonna go in you stay, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Stay, you stay here yeah, i'm sure. like yeah bill, i wasn't gonna go on sure. here unless i was actually crazy right. yeah you go when you talk to him you've been with him since you know almost day one right and uh yeah please and don't worry about me at all and uh so a third call comes that don't go to his home, go to his, go to the party and maybe that you can see him after the party. Okay. And, um, so Bill, you could tell was just kind of going through the motions at the party. Yeah. Frank, 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 but still wondering if he was going to get a call to go, sure. go over to see the chief. I wonder and, when he uh, fit. I wonder when he fit in thinking about me that day. 
tough one. Yeah, it had to be tough. Yeah, tough if you were if you pressed yeah. him, he might say that he missed that one. No, no, that no, no, day. no. Every day. Every day. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, and um, so, no, he, Mr. Wilson. How long after that did he pass away? Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks later, he passed okay. away. So, yeah. so, yep. so he passes away. Obviously, the team was going to be sold because – there was no thought of the family keeping the team, correct? Like that was no, because there was there was his wife right. and then his daughter Christy, but they were never there was never a consideration. I not that I know of. The estate tax was clearly the taxes issue. were would crush. Yeah, there was no way to really do it without it hurting the family more than it would. Right, have. and neither one yeah. of them really had any interest in running an NFL team. I don't. I don't think hand, in a hands-on way. <laughs> correct. <No. laughs> correct. That yeah. that'd have been interesting. Yeah. Uh, okay, so. Team's going to be sold. Everything's in flux. Yeah, your one to ten level of trepidation has to be. Yeah, uh, it's it's it took a down. It trended down. Okay, pretty quickly. so I, because he, who knows? All right, who knows? This is uncharted territory. Clearly, so so you know there were basically three main suitors. Correct. There was there was the Pagulas yep. who had already bought the Sabers, who four years ago nobody in Buffalo knew anything about. Right. Who just burst on the scene by the Sabers. Oh, you know, maybe they'll buy the Bills. Mm-hmm. There's the John Bon Jovi, Toronto, Rogers Center yep. owner yep. who were saying all the right things. But I, in retrospect, oh. there's no chance they were going to keep them in Buffalo. No way. Correct? We all knew it. We were, we were very afraid of that one. Okay. And then the third guy was uh, Donald Trump. Yeah. Whatever <laughs> happened to that guy, I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's right. I don't know. And uh, you don't know how serious that actual bid was. Do you have any recollections of him, like, when you heard he was bidding or in the running, like, was there any, do you have any stories about that? Only that we'd imagine if that happened, we we're all gone. Like, okay. He would, he would maybe keep things intact for a season because sure. of the timing. Okay. But that ultimately, maybe you would have been on like the apprentice Buffalo <laughs> Bills. Like maybe you guys would have <laughs> yeah, had an audition yeah. for your yeah. job yeah. in some like reality show. Yeah. Uh, okay. But so he, you, he, he said all the right things about, you know, I want to keep the team in Buffalo, but even if that were true, it was look, looked like he was going to just have his own people running everything. Yeah. Of course, sure. So two out of three, he only he owned a USFL team, the Generals, right? Correct, Jim Doug, Kelly and Doug Flutie. And, so he had some, right? Not Jim Kelly, Doug Flutie. Flutie, I'm sorry, that's okay. Yeah. So two out of the three serious bidders for the team, you guys were rooting against because you felt like you'd be gone. Yeah. Like yeah, just gone. I mean, I mean the, the Bon Jovi group, like you said, you we, might you might get one season. We are on borrowed time. Yeah, that would be even worse. You know, because the, the team might moving, leave, right? Or or Donald Trump, who just you know is just going to fire the whole staff, probably. Yeah, yeah, and, and especially we, considering the track record of the team over the last fifteen years, it's not as if they were buying a winning organization. No, no, we were rooting for the Pakulas for all those reasons that. You know, we kept hearing, you know, they, they kept the Sabres there. They loved Buffalo. They're from Buffalo. We just, we hoped that they would be able to win the bid. Like, if a real bidding war started, it sounded like you can imagine their ceiling, despite hearing, uh, you know, how much money uh, uh, Terry and Kim had made in, in the oil fracking business, that there would still be a limit that, that they might just be like, ah, that's too rich for my sure. blood, you know. The Rogers, the, the Toronto bid had like this looming fear of, all of this like mystery money, right? Like, oh my God, there's gonna well, be all this money up in Toronto and yeah. Rogers Communications and they own the Blue Jays. And like, it, it felt like they were the people that if they really wanted to push the the envelope of, of the price, yeah. you know, it was almost unlimited. Well, and, and, and having played in Toronto every year, all those years, one of the things just visually you couldn't ignore was how big Toronto was. And right. there was scaffolding everywhere. Yeah. A building's just going Still up is. all over the place. Still you know, so yeah. Right. So so the idea of an NFL team in Toronto was very feasible. It, absolutely. And, yeah. they and, had an NBA team, right? Right. And and this was pre Bills Mafia. This was pre I mean, the Bills had no national cachet at all. No. Like no. never a primetime game. They'd get the one cursory right. you know, primetime game. But there was there was no buzz about the Bills. It feels like this was the team was at risk, at peril of leaving. I mean, yeah. and, and I don't know if there would have been, there would have been a lot of outcry and all, but it would have been based upon like the 90s yeah. rather than the last 15 years of Bill's football. Well, well, more so, of course. Yeah. I mean, the nostalgia of the 90s teams and, um, you know, the, the team had a defense that was, but you can't win without that. You had fits that 
had a good year and all of a sudden you know, it seems like teams just figured them out and the, the, the future. Yeah. But it was, it was way bigger than that. It was, what, just, it was scary. What was your reaction when you found out the Pagulas won the bid? Um, I had gotten a tip that I've never shared publicly, but, uh, traveling on the road, I work with the, um, I worked with the, uh, screeners we took four screeners with us so that the league wouldn't have to do it or whoever and i got to know them them really well it was charlie and angel and jason and dave and uh they handled a part of the airport that terry and kim flew in and out of all the time with the sabers okay they knew them well like they were like maybe the only people i knew that knew them well okay and he they said they're great people uh but he said that Terry, one of the guys told me, he goes, Terry told me a few weeks ago, like, it's going to happen. We're, 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 we're going to, they're going to get the team. And okay. He goes, I, 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 I sure. Yeah, drinks. Yeah. He, he is like, I, you know, can't, don't share this. I didn't, I didn't even share it with my own family, but I wanted to believe it. Sure. Of course. And th this might've been a couple months before that. Like he said, Terry, it's, it's going to happen. They're going to get it. They know they're going to get it. And they did. You know, so did you immediately take a deep because it was in season? Well, here's here's an interesting wrinkle to it. I went to college with Kim. Right. I, I, I knew that. <laughs> I, 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 right. Yeah. We knew each other just a little bit way back then. And uh, she was two years behind me. I had an internship with the Bills. So when she came, I didn't want to be like run up in her face and, hey, you remember me? But sure. Eventually, put it this way, there, were, there was a lot of uh, when they came in, there were a lot of people trying to get very close very quickly of almost like hey no one talks to them but us right and okay me. <laughs> and uh so i i wasn't gonna push that i felt i felt good about my position but then and kim she knew amy at a christmas party we would talk and oh i remember this professor that professor so i thought man i'm really in the you had a bit of, you had a bit of an in yeah, yeah, and a weird one. I almost got kind of teased at, at the it, building, like, "Yeah, oh, are you going to be our new G?" No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the you're the Pagula's boy, right? Right, like right. From That's from college, whatever else. No, but it's right. a, it was a passing a passing uh, relationship. I mean, it was, it was something you knew barely. She said at a point, "Oh, I remember," because she was in business, and she said, "Oh, I remember hearing there at Houghton when we were able to get up uh, the first intern at the Bills," and she goes, "I." And then she had to put two and two together to, to ultimately realize that it was me. Okay, got it. You know, yeah. And and that uh, had to that, it had to make you feel better. Oh yeah, secure. Yeah. That hey, I'm I'm okay here, right? I'm because you know the GM was staying. Yeah. And so the organization, the structure was going to stay at least for one year. Doug right? was Doug was still going to be there, and yeah, there was. I probably felt better at that point than I had in, in, in years of too many transitions. So you're, you're there, Doug's there. We go through obviously the, the, uh, Doug Marone era yeah. and the, which was not your favorite. You've chronicled on this show many times. Mm. He gets let, he, he leaves, quits. Yeah. Rex comes in. Yep. And that's the last coach you obviously worked for. Yeah. We talked quite a bit about Rex on the yep. show. Um, how was it working with Doug and Rex, you cleared the hurdle of staying with Rex, you know, staying on when Rex was hired. Yeah. Anything change for you? Um, not really, despite, you know, the big coming of Rex and the grandioseness of it. Uh, my, my position stayed. Were you surprised pretty, pretty they stable. hired Rex? Were you hired that Doug? Doug Will is a very understated, quiet. Right. You know, yeah, but he, he did not, he, he had a big blow up with, with Doug Marone. Okay. Uh, they had a huge fight before practice that had the players shaken up actually. Really? Uh, Doug Marone got into it with Russ and, and Whaley and Doug Whaley in front of the players and in front of some of the media. Okay. And it, about it what? Leaked, do you remember? Um, just a kind of general discontent. Okay. That their styles were different and they, he, was Doug Marone the, the the most difficult person you've ever you ever worked with at one Bills draft? As a head coach, he was okay. Yeah, yeah he, but Marone said something about you know you you guys ah oh, you're just drinking buddies and you know oh uh, yeah you know, yeah it's tough yeah and it, I'm not I'm not it's not necessarily a scoop but the players came up and were, I said hey, I heard you had an interesting practice and I'm like oh my gosh yeah I didn't expect that like wow this is back with Marone so um, you know Terry and Kim with with um, 
Doug Whaley and, and Russ still overseeing the business side of things seemed like a stable, you know, situation going forward. Um, and then, you know, with Rex, I think famously, I mentioned in year two when he brought in his brother, the defense that was like one of the best in the league, just inexplicably fell apart. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wrap <laughs> the, wrap this show up with you know you left it when we did our, our Marv to McDermott uh, series. I love your your recalling of of the last night of Doug Whaley's reign at the Bills and yeah. you know the the 2017 draft. It, it was night three of the draft, correct? And, yeah. and you know they had hired Sean McDermott, and you're feeling pretty good. He clearly was feeling like, oh man, maybe I got through this. Maybe I can still be the GM. Like was. Was there a thought that he'd survive and, and, and stay oh, with Sean? Absolutely. That night, uh, even though there was rumors about the scouting staff all getting let go that hit pro football talk, they turned out to be true. No one knows how, knows how they got there. Um, but, yeah, night three of the draft, when I left at 8 o'clock that night and saw that table, it was Terry and Kim and uh, Sean McDermott and Doug and Jim Monis, and they were just yucking it up, having a great old time, and eight hours Sorry, 12 hours later, I got a call that they were all fired. Were you surprised? Not just because of I that. I was surprised given I, I thought there might have been something to the rumors ab about it. But then when I saw it that night, I'm like, oh, I guess those rumors were silly. You know, they were apparently true. Random question. Did you ever leak anything? Um, Did you, were, you, were you ever no. approached to leak? Uh, I was in the position to... I could have created some headlines. Of course you could have. Yeah. Right. That's, that's, <laughs> that's why, that's why, that's no. why I asked you, did not naming names, did anybody ever approach you like to be a source? Um, I was more of an under the radar. I think um, it, people internally did. Sure. You know, okay. like, hey, I know you were part of those meetings. What, what happened? Sure. Okay. But yeah, media, no media uh, yeah. guys, like nobody ever really approached no. you to say, hey. I, I didn't, I didn't have a lot of, um, Internal media, maybe, yeah, you know, uh, Chris Brown. Um, okay. And, and uh, but I, Chris, Chris wouldn't put me in a bad situation. Sure. He would always like say, hey, is there anything you can tell me? Did you know who? He wouldn't say, I heard this. Is this true? He sure. wouldn't do that okay. to me. Yeah. Did, did, did you and everyone else know who the leakers were at One Bills Drive? Yeah. It was pretty well known. Oh, yeah. Was it uh, ever sought out or try to be quashed there, there were things that were put to the test okay that, that litmus test that happened and we're like okay we know that we know where that came from and that never like went anywhere right well i guess if you're at the top then <laughs> you well, can't yeah. you can't fire yourself <laughs> right you're not, yeah. gonna, you're not gonna fire yourself that's just interesting because that's something we haven't really talked about is you right. had you had a lot of it you, you knew a lot yeah you knew a lot and that's sought after information right for many different agents you know media everybody I, I, you were never approached that's interesting by, by media no i i think i don't think the media because really they operated in a different part of the building and i wasn't at practice i was at my office i you know occasionally go down to practice here and there but i wasn't a regular figure at all um i don't i don't think they sought me out as a person that um you know might have this information i was sitting on a lot but they they didn't view me that way interesting that, yeah. Well, that's that's a good thing. Yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna leave it there for now. Uh, obviously, if anybody, I'd love some feedback. We'd love to any questions, anything that you think that we didn't cover or you'd want to hear more about. Uh, I am not a drought era expert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Don clearly is. Hopefully, this get, gave everybody a really uh, good insight behind the scenes. I hope so. Well, yeah. Thanks. Good questions, Josh. Everyone, do please wanna... like like and subscribe to the yes, episode. Yes. And uh, do we? Do you want to? You want to? Put a little teaser out there about what we were talking about before the uh, episode. Yeah, we're gonna do uh, the all-time drought team. Uh, I think I think that's gonna be a project that we're gonna take on and maybe chronicle one of the drought seasons. And I think 2011 is is a pretty good one that we're gonna do a show on. I want to I want to hear from our listeners and on on Twitter. You know, I um, yeah, I, there there's some people that normally engage with us and others that I I think would be a, a fun uh, game to play. Absolutely, we'll see everybody next week. Thank you. Yep.